Welcome to the CCFR Radio Podcast, your source for news, updates, and stories from the CCFR. Hey everybody, welcome to episode 144 of the CCFR Radio Podcast. I'm your host, Rod Giltak. Thanks for joining me again today on the show. Um, oddly enough, we still have lots of stuff to talk about. Uh, Wilson's going to come on to cover a, uh, an update on the passage of Bill C-21, where that is in the legislative process. Uh, we're also going to have some insights to share on the uh, the win of the uh, uh, United Conservative Party of Alberta in their general election, uh, provincial election. So we've got a, a few things to, to share with you on that. Of course, more bizarre behavior by politicians obsessed with taking your firearms. I don't think we're ever going to run out of material like that um, anytime soon. Uh, anyway, all that and more, uh, we will get into it. But before we get started, I just want to thank the businesses out there in our community that support the CCFR radio podcast. Bullseye North stocks a wide variety of guns, ammo, optics, knives, and accessories from all the big brands and offers free shipping nationwide on orders over $200. Some conditions apply. Sign up for their weekly newsletter to get zeroed in on their weekly deals and live inventory. Bullseye North is your sports shooting superstore. A huge thank you goes out to our great friends over at the Saskatchewan Rivers chapter of Safari Club International. They do a lot of great work over there, including supporting the CCFR and the CCFR radio podcast. Check out all their great work at saskriversci.com. That's saskriversci.com. CTOMS has been a provider of trauma care training to military and police in Canada for nearly two decades. Now this emergency medical training is being made available to a wider audience through CTOMS Academy online courses. This online training is valuable to anyone that pursues sporting or outdoor activities or finds value in being prepared for a crisis. Visit ctomsacademy.skillbuilder.co and use promo code CCFR30 for a 30% discount on all training. And thank you so much to our great friends over at Vortex Canada. They continue to support the CCFR podcast and the CCFR. Can't say enough about them. Check out all their great products at vortexcanada.net. That's vortexcanada.net. Vortex, the force of optics. Okay, we are back. So a couple of housekeeping items to share with you and uh, before I bring Tracy on, and actually a, a, an interesting story, funny story. It's political in nature, in case you were, uh, in case you were wondering. Um, but anyway, so first thing I want to mention is there'll be no podcast two weeks from now. It's going to be three weeks from now because I'm in Ottawa for the AGM and I got some other things to do while I'm in the neighborhood. So I won't be back in time to do the podcast. So it'll be bumped a week and then it'll be two weeks after that as normal. And while I'm on that topic, I might as well share with you that um, we're not going to do, we're act, I'm actually only going to do two TV shows, two television shows over the summer. So one show for July and one show for August. Um, the TV show is quite a bit of work because it's a television format, um, not like the the podcast where I can just ramble on and, you know, I don't have to, I have to do minimal editing. So anyway, I'm just doing that. I'm not sure whether I'm going to do that with the podcast or not. The podcast is easier to do because it's, uh, you know, I don't have to worry about time, um, but uh, we'll have to see. We'll see when we get there. Uh, but basically, there's two reasons why we're taking a break over the summer. Number one, I want to cycle staff through so that they get a rest and myself for that matter. The last time I took any time off was, uh, well, coming up two years ago when I was treated for throat cancer, right? That was, that was my holiday. So anyway, I want to take a little bit of time off over the summer, but actually more importantly, I'm trying to finish off a project that I started about four months ago. I think I mentioned that we are restructuring the CCFR to be, um, to be the corporation that it is uh, today rather than what we were seven and a half years ago. So we've been running uh, the uh, corporation like a small business, so I'm kind of putting in more people. I'm putting in um, uh, more processes, more internal policies, software, stuff like that to structure the CCFR such that if something happened to me and or Wilson and or staff or Steve or anybody that we could plug other people in and the, and the organization wouldn't just collapse because nobody knows what's going on. So more, uh, more corporate structure. I tend to avoid that kind of stuff because it does create a little bit more overhead burden, right? Um, because yeah, you have to, you have to input more information and document more things, right? And we've been extremely busy, uh, but uh, it's what's best for the CCFR, and it's a lot of work to do that. And of course, 
to make that decision to do that couldn't have come at a worse time because we have a maniacal government, including the, the NDP and the bloc, that are dead set against taking all guns away from, from Canadians for some reason, right? So anyway, that's, uh, that's going on this summer. It's going to give me a chance to get caught up with some rest and get caught up with the, uh, the uh, project to restructure a bunch of things at the CCFR. Anyway, next thing. Um, so I guess all that to say, podcast in three weeks. We'll do another one in two weeks, and I don't know what's going to happen for the summer. I'll let you know in a, in a few weeks uh, when I get a little bit closer. I, I also want to make a mention of our friends over at the Cowichan Fishing Game Club on Vancouver Island. The last time I did a, a big thank you to all these clubs, I I left them out, not by um, not by intention, of course. It's just it's hard to keep every detail of everything straight when we're trying to do trade shows and and everything else and all the projects that the CCFR does and run the corporation and respond to everything the government does and it gets missed. So I just wanted to uh, shout out that, uh, give a shout out to to our friends over there on the island for helping us out. They've sent us a couple of donations and I can't tell you how much we appreciate their help and the help of everyone that supports the CCFR because all this stuff that I've been babbling about just wouldn't even exist, right? We would either be a Facebook group where somebody shows up on Twitter and slings some mud and then they're gone, right? Um, we can't do the things that we do uh, like we have been without supportive people and the community is supporting us. So again, I can't thank you all enough for that. Uh, next thing, AGM. Annual general meeting tickets are closing. I don't know when. It might be in a few days or something, but it'll be, we. I think, be, a week before the AGM, we have to give the hotel and uh, and some other um, places the final count. So that means we're closing admission. So I printed this thing out to talk about it, but I printed out too small. Just so you know, I'm going to put, I went to go look for how to <laughs> how to uh, register for the AGM, and it was a bit to find it. I had to actually go on our website to the web story, scroll all the way to the bottom to be like register here, and it's a small little hyperlink. I don't know if I'm missing something else, but I didn't notice that earlier. I would have had it right at the top of the website. Maybe it is, and I missed it. But nonetheless, I'm going to put the link for the AGM in the description box below in this video so you can go there and check it out. But basically, we have the full weekend pass for couples. We have the full weekend pass for individuals, right? That's 185 bucks, and that includes the Friday night rock party, I guess uh, Wilson is calling it, uh, all the Saturday seminars with uh, Ian Runkle and uh, Andrew Lawton from True North, and they ask me anything. So in person, Tracy and I will, will sit in a room full of people and answer any of your questions. Well, obviously reasonable ones, but you know, this is not, it's not filtered. And uh, so really important. You got that. And of course the big dinner with a comedian and a photo booth and everything. We're all going to be there. It's going to be awesome. Um, and something this big, I'm not sure it'll happen again because you know, it's gets times are strange, right? But for people that are local, if you want to just come to the Saturday seminars, there's a price for that, 60 bucks. If you want to come to the Friday night rock party only, just come to the Friday night if you're local, check out the band. I'm going to do, be doing a, a set, the first set with the band, and then they're just going to play, and I'm going to just have fun for the rest of the night. You can do that, and it's 25 bucks to get in there. So all the proceeds go to obviously to pay for the event, and uh, anything more goes to the CCFR, so it's a good cause. Same thing with the seminars, and if you just want to come for dinner, it's $100, and that includes all of your, your uh, full buffet dinner and the comedian and the photo booth and all the rest of that stuff, okay? So I'm going to put a link in the description box for that stuff. If you're local, come on down. Choose one of the nights to come uh, down and hang out with us, and we will hopefully see you there. Also, I also want to make, uh, make a mention of Wolverine Days is coming up. I don't have the date. I don't have that information with me, but you can go to Wolverine Supplies website. I think it's wolverinesupplies.com or .ca, if I'm not mistaken by memory, they're having their Wolverine Days event, and it's pretty awesome. It's outside of Verdon, Manitoba, so if you're in the area, make sure you go check them out. They're raising money as well, and we're going to be the beneficiary of that, so I really appreciate um, all the help that we've always gotten from Wolverine Supplies. I, like I said, there's just another example of the community helping us go to battle for the community, and it just doesn't happen unless we're all working with each other, right? So anyway, just... Can't say enough about the help we've gotten from Wolverine Supplies. Okay, so my little story, and then we'll cut over to, to Wilson. So th this is this is pretty interesting. So I was doing the TV show, and I have to do like an opening monologue kind of intro thing, right? Where I have my own content, and then I bring Tracy on and or a guest. And I had on my list, because I keep a running list throughout 
the two week period so that I'm not in a big panic when it comes time to do the TV show and or the podcast. So every time I have an idea, write it down. And then when I get there, it's just like, oh, there's my list. Well, I had written down that I wanted to talk about a um, um, a tweet that our friends over at Poly CSUV made. And it was about, I think it was IPSC or IDPA. I can't remember which one. And basically how, you know, shooting sports or are, are, are training for murderers, basically, I guess is the idea. You know, I'm paraphrasing, of course. And, um, you know, I thought, well, just, you know, how, how ridiculous. I mean, you know. Um, driving a sports car isn't training for, you know, the Indy or F1, right? Like it's just people do what they do. And there's a, there's a really, <laughs> there's a really stark difference between shooting sports and murdering people, right? And reality has borne it out that there is no real connection. Do bad things happen? Yeah, they happen with rental vans. They happen with knives. They happen with guns. If there's a violence problem, you deal with the violence problem. So anyway, not telling you all something you don't know. So anyway, I go into their their crazy feed. I start looking down and I'm like, oh man, I miss so much in their feed, right? Because I don't keep that close an eye on them. And, you know, there's all kinds of crazy stuff in there. And <laughs> I ended up, I found the, 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 the tweet. But before that, I ran into this one that I want to tell you about. And I'm like, this is actually more interesting than the, <laughs> than the other one. And basically it's, it's just how the level of disdain that the people over at Poly says if you have for hunters, because usually, you know, you'll see them the minute that the hunting community starts getting angry at them or, you know, they start riling them up. Usually they'll pull back. They're like, oh, no, no, it's all, you know, we're all good with hunters. Oh, we're all good with indigenous hunters. They don't want too many people standing up at the same time or they'll be defe defeated politically, right? So they, just like the liberal government and the NDP and the bloc, they want to cut you down into little segments, you know, destroy one, you know, go, go after the airsofters, get them out of the way. Um, you know, go after the handgun owners, go after just the, the black rifle people, go after the target shooters, go after the collectors, you know, and then we'll tackle the hunters later, right? Because they're too big of a group. But when we all stand together, it's like, well, airsoft gets saved. We all stand together. It's like, oh, a bunch of long guns got saved, you know, and hunters got left alone. So that's how it works. When we all stand together, we're a larger political force and they, they know that that's, a, that's not a winner for them. So anyway... But unfortunately, the mask slips with them um, from time to time, as you well know. And then they say something completely ridiculous, and especially with hunters. All right, so Polly says, if you on their Twitter feed here, they, they've, they found some letters to the editor at the Globe and Mail, and they just think they're great. They just, they obviously, they agree with this. It echoes exactly the way they see the world. So here they are, great at Globe and Mail letters. Martin Pick writes, hunters can ask for rifles, for hunting, big game. So, hey, all you hunters, you can come with hat in hand and you can ask for these things from the government. Doesn't mean that you'll get them, but you can ask, you little commoners. Game birds are hunted with shotguns with a range of 200 meters. So you may be able to be justified in having shotguns, but wait, it gets better. So there's some stuff about assault weapons not being good for anything, so ban them and buy them back or whatever, right? But get this, I'm gonna read this for you. Luke Mastin from Toronto, by the way, writes, the liberals and the majority of the country want to ban assault style firearms that are regularly used in crimes and murders. So as you well know, sorry to stop in the middle, as you well know, that's completely false. Absolutely untrue in every way, but it is not unusual for people that know nothing about guns. It's like one of those topics where the people that are the most convinced that they have the right answer are the people that know the absolute least about the topic at hand. It's it's becoming something is just really a, a feature of Canadian life these days. But anyway, I can I will continue. But they don't want to upset the small but very vocal hunting community. It's not small, bud. Some of whom, for some reason, right, you know, who could even understand, for some reason, feel the need to use such lethal weapons to kill animals and birds. Can I point out? That for the vast majority of these hunters, this is just a hobby. Like it's nothing, right? Like marathon running or sports betting or bowling. So a widely popular ban on lethal weapons is being shelled in, def in deference to a hobby? Can these people not be persuaded, these misguided people obviously, to take up a less violent hobby, say mahjong or even paintball, if they really need to shoot something? Luke Mastin from Toronto. Well, who would have guessed? So, it, you know, it's just, I, I, the reason why I find this so interesting is the, 
Pauli says to Sophia, they have such a, just a, a, a seething, deep rooted disdain for, for anyone that doesn't think like them, for anyone that would disagree with them, like for hunters or any of us, of course, right? Just the fact that we're resisting all of this stuff is absolutely outrageous to them. Anyway, I thought it was interesting. Okay, we're going to bring uh, Tracy Wilson on and then I'll talk to you guys uh, at the end. All right, we are back and we've got uh, Tracy Wilson of the CCFR here via Skype. Wilson! It says it right on my shirt. Wilson! Yeah, I was just reading it. That's all I was doing. Yeah. Yes, yes. That's me. <laughs> all right. We got a lot of really uh, some interesting news and a couple of funny stories to share with everybody, so we might as well get started. Yeah. I think the biggest news right now is uh, Alberta has elected a majority government and it just so happens it's the UCP. So uh, probably That's collective right. sigh of relief from many in Alberta, but uh, <laughs> why don't we just kick that around a little bit? Yeah, that's right. So Danielle Smith roared to a win with a majority uh, mandate with the United Conservative uh, Party of Alberta. And this is interesting because all the pollsters kind of had it wrong. They were talking about it being an NDP Notley win and, you know, it's too close to tell. And even watching the results roll in when it was fairly obvious that Danielle Smith had indeed won a majority, they were so reluctant to actually announce that it. it was like it was paining them to say it. But in the end, uh, yeah, she knocked it out of the park. They they did lose, I think, about 10 or 11 seats uh, to the NDP, um, but they still came out of it with a full majority mandate, which is exactly what they needed. Yeah, it's just it's just interesting. I mean, in, in the in the larger cities, you still you saw some ridings flip over to NDP. Yeah, and, and I mean, it's amazing to me. I don't want to get too far away from firearms, right? Because we put a we put a, a, a pretty significant effort into you know staying in our wheelhouse. But it's just amazing to me how people, uh, how people vote. It yeah. just it is because you know when conservatives are in power, typically, typically Canada is safer, public safety is improved, the economy is more stable, the government stays out of your life. Uh, certainly, a lot more than the government's in our life right now. I don't know why people. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just, it's just really weird. Well, in. In uh, Alberta is a, a good case study because, of course, you know, there's a lot of rural, rural areas in Alberta. But even those seats that the NDP were able to steal back were in the big cities, right, primarily and primarily Calgary. And in particular, you look at um, former, well, I guess he's former now, Minister of Justice uh, Tyler Shandro, responsible for the Alberta Firearms Act, um, appointed uh, Terry Bryan, you know, a good a good defender and uh champion for firearms owners, he lost his riding by seven votes. And you and I were talking about this offline. If you break that down, you know, we've both got spouses and adult children. If my house and your house and maybe even just half of our adult children didn't go out and vote, that would have been the difference. Seven votes, like a minivan full of people could have changed the outcome of that riding in particular and those ridings around Calgary or in Calgary that flipped to the NDP, all of those combined, it was only 218 votes that yeah. gave all those ridings to the, to the NDP. So when you think that your vote or, you know, I'm tired, I had a long day, I don't feel like going to vote. If you think your vote doesn't matter, you couldn't be more wrong. And this is a perfect example of that. Well, and just, a, you know, the, the idea that mm -hmm. you and, you know, and one other person deciding that you're tired from working, you just don't feel like it that day, or all the days for advanced voting, staying home will change the yeah. course of the, your province or in, in a federal election, the course of the entire country for somewhere between two, two and a half to four years, right? So yeah, I think, well, that's a big deal. Yeah, like when you have that one chance, that one chance every two and a half to four years, you drop everything, take the day off if you need to, and go stand in line for 20 minutes and cast your vote. Go call everybody you know, every relative, everybody that you know, like friend of, that you know, go to their house, pick them up, drive them, just go, hey, yeah. man, I'm picking you up. I'll be there in 15 minutes. You're going to stand in line for 20 minutes, and I'm going to take you right home, you know, or whatever. We'll go out for dinner after or whatever. You, you drop everything and you vote. Because vote that that yeah. one that one day you have to make something else a priority will change the course of your entire future and and most importantly the future of the you know generations that come after because I'll tell you uh, you know no matter what happens in Canada um, obviously excluding a, a total collapse of society 
I'm going to be fine, right? I'm already old. It's yeah. it's my kids and your kids out there that are going to mm -hmm. pay the price for all of this tomfoolery. So you just we we keep harping on it, but it's so important. Like, don't ever sit back and go, yeah, I didn't vote. It didn't matter anyway because the liberals won again. It's like no, they won again because you didn't go vote. Yeah. Anyway, pretty crazy. All right. Um, so congratulations to the uh, Alberta UCP. Good win. Yes. Big win. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. things, uh, you can breathe a, a sigh of relief, as I mentioned, uh, that, you know, you don't have uh, Rachel Notley and the NDP running your province for the next four years, running it basically right into the ground. But uh, right. I will say one more thing before we move move uh, move along is what a, what a nasty campaign. Oh, my God. It was vicious. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we've you and I have witnessed the total dissent you know, the, the bottoming out of politics in Canada over the last seven and a yeah. half years, it's it's quite discouraging because once you lower the bar, everyone else has to go under that bar too to compete with you. And yeah. just, yeah, it's never been like this as far as, you know, as far as I remember, and I've been alive, you know, 50 some odd years, right? So yeah, it's, uh, it's too bad. But anyway, the, at least the right people won this time around. All right, let's move on. Um, a C, update on C21, where are we at? Yeah, so C21 is now with the Senate. Um, as of the day of recording, uh, the Senate was going to do second reading. So this is a part of the bill where they will do some debate. Um, they will probably send it over to the Standing Committee on Public Safety and National Defense, and the committee will study it. Hopefully they're going to hear from witnesses. You know, we'll have to see how it all plays out. But the timelines here are pretty tight. As you know, the federal... The in, in the House of Commons, the Liberals have moved time allocation and closure motions and everything else to try and ram this thing through, you know, a, after after making a complete mess of it. Um, but the House rises June 23rd. The Senate does sit for a week longer, so June 30th. But then they rise for the summer and they're gone until September. So I don't know that there's enough time to get C21 dealt with, but we'll just have to to play it out and see where we're at. But yeah, yeah, it's with the Senate. Yeah. All right. Well, it's making its way through the process. Yeah. Um, you know, I, for one, would be really happy if we could get a little bit of a break over the summer because <laughs> I was talking to I a friend. I feel like you just jinxed us. Yeah. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Knock oh, no. on wood or something. Uh, yeah. I don't know how it could get any worse. So I think I'm pretty no. safe. Um, I was just talking to a friend of mine I hadn't talked to in about five months, six months um, last night because I was in gridlock. And he's like, you know, how's work going? You know, and I'm like, is that a joke? <laughs> you know, like, what do you mean, how's it going? You know, it's it's just been never, I think we already might have talked about this on another podcast, but it's just never been like this, not with Bill C-71, no. um, not with anything else we've ever done where it's just been just rapid fire, endless, like, oh, they just held another presser. Oh, there's an OIC coming. Oh, there's new oh, amendments. Yeah. Oh, they've withdrawn these amendments. Oh, there's new ones. Oh, now they're going to strike a committee. Oh, they've held another press conference just to beat up on gun owners and, you know, try to manipulate the public. It just, it's, you know, it's just endless with these guys. So anyway, yeah. hopefully they uh, they just take a break over the summer, which would be great because I got a lot of catching up to do with other stuff, projects at the CCFR and other things to do, man. Yeah, so, me too. Yeah, we've been running mm -hmm. pillar to post for a long time. All right. Now, okay. a little bit of fun. So, well, it's not fun. The first part isn't fun because you uh, need to be held accountable for something, and it's um, oh. it's to do with online attacks. So uh, there is a sitting liberal MP, Adam Van Van Co Coverden. Van Cover Vernon? Coverden, I think. Yeah, whatever. Adam. I could be butchering it. Uh, big Adam. He has leveled a very serious accusation of um, of a on, an online attack that we, the CCFR, has perpetrated against them. And when I say we, it's it's you via Twitter. Oh, me. And the, a mean tweet? Well, it's a, he's claimed that it's a serious attack. We're going to have a look at that. Um, okay. And he's being attacked uh, for no other reason other than standing up uh, for public safety and for reasonable gun laws. So mm. I think mm -hmm. that you deserve an opportunity for us to kind of talk about the attack, and you deserve an opportunity to be accountable for it. So... Why don't okay. we play the clip first so you can hear from his side um, about the attack, and then you'll have an opportunity to speak to it after. Okay. 
Mr. Speaker, the, the gun lobby is, is simultaneously attacking members of Parliament like me on social media for standing up for public safety and responsible gun laws and retweeting Conservative MPs and the leader of the Conservative Party. So it seems to me now that similar to the United States, the Canadian gun lobby and the Conservative Party in Canada are one and the same. They're clearly bed buddies, well, Mr. Speaker. Okay, so now is your, um, your opportunity, Ms. Wilson, to to tell your side of the story, uh, to justify your actions or be held accountable, uh, accountable for it uh, in some way. Go ahead. Oh, I'll show you exactly what went on. So this was during C21 debate in third reading in the House of Commons. And Adam Van Coeverden was speaking to C21. And he said that to prevent suicide, Canadians need a phone beside their beds, not a gun. So I tweeted him. Yeah. Okay. Liberal at Van Kayak. This is me talking. Says to prevent suicide, Canadians need a phone beside their beds, not a gun. I put a little arrow and I said, this is the same government that can't manage to implement 988 suicide line years later. Another little arrow for a new point. Guns account for between 13 to 16% of all suicides. 85% of suicides in Canada have nothing to do with a gun. I got that information from StatsCan, by the way. That's literally the tweet. So you haven't interacted That's, with them before. This is the attack. No, this is the about. attack. This is the vicious, horrific attack that he has been subjected to, that he had to rise in the House of Commons and address. This is it. Hmm. Well, hmm. obviously, you've now um, sent statistics to him in front of everyone. Uh, showing how uh, what he said was uh, was incorrect. And yes, that is a terrible attack. And I want you to promise me and the members that you will not levy these kinds of personal attacks against uh, people like good, upstanding, uh, accurately speaking citizens like uh, Adam Van whatever. Oh, I promise I'm going to keep doing it. But what I... <laughs> gonna, oh my I'm God, what? <laughs> yes, if this is considered an attack on a member of parliament, then I can promise there'll be a lot of them. Um, but at the same time, I would also like to know in when Adam said that the conservatives and the, you know, evil, scary gun lobby are bed buddies. That's inappropriate. Like, what did you mean by that? I don't know. That's awkward. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, anyways. Anyway, I mean, we've been. Or Adam. You know, it's Kendra interesting. Flower. Yeah, we were we were talking about this, um, this whole cry bully phenomenon that we've been witnessing yeah. for the last seven and a half years, right? Where these people say the most atrocious things about you, demonstrably untrue, you know, twist everything you say and being just some kind of monstrous statement or whatever. And then you throw anything back at them and they're like, oh my God, I've just been just victim Attacked. of your attacks, your relentless attacks. Like Pam, right? If you remember. Oh yeah. You yeah, know, I'm off she's just the same thing. She is. It's funny because it's, it's like this elitist, completely disconnected from how, I mean, I've said this before, right? So I'm sort of repeating myself, but disconnected from how normal people interact with each other, right? Especially if they have um, conflict, right? Mm -hmm. And it's it's just this elitist, like how, because if you look at what we've done to her as a tax, it's like, well, yeah, we wrapped an RV and parked it in front of her campaign office with liberal failure on public safety on the side of it. Like we campaigned against her in an, in an election. Complete. We did it to all kinds of yeah, ridings too. Like, illegally. I mean, that was our thing, right? Because yeah. you guys failed on public safety. Well, like it's the it's the it's the idea that we campaigned against her yeah. and we opposed her in a, in a federal election. Right. You. And these people yeah. can't even get their heads around the fact that you, a, some commoner, you know, out of the field would would oppose them when they're trying to do something for themselves. I don't know. It's just a very, <laughs> very interesting. But, yeah, there's your there's your cry bully stuff. And, and I'll mention one more one more thing before we uh, move on is if you remember when you were a kid, if you're our age, my age. I'm a little bit older. You remember that story that you, you always were told by your parents or whoever of the boy who cried wolf. Yeah. And th that story is meant to be like, listen, if you're not a victim or you don't need help or you whatever, you don't ever do that because if you do need help, if you actually are a victim, you've destroyed everyone's, you've destroyed your credibility. No one, you know, mm -hmm. no one's going to come to your rescue and nobody's going to believe you if you ever really needed it. It was, it was a tale of here's how not to be a crappy person. And yeah. this is what I see constantly. This is what you see constantly from these people. It's like, I'm a oh, victim. Yeah. I've been attacked. These 
relentless attacks. It's just, yeah, nobody's attacking you, bud. They say it all the time. Yeah. And it's, you know, the problem is, and then people are like, oh, you're the, the bad gun lobby. And I'm like, I want a crisis line for people who need help. And I want to talk about saving, you know, all kinds of suicides, right? Like, yeah, we're not the same. Yeah, well, and, and not to beat it to death, but if you even just look at what he said, Canadians need a, a phone by their by their bed other than the gun. Like, Canadians yeah, don't right? do that. That's not actually a thing in Canada. And the reason he's saying that is he wants the, the dum-dums out there to be like, oh, my God, if you're a gun owner, do you have a gun beside your bed in case you get depressed and you want to end your life? Like, yeah. how? What a, what a horrible, ridiculous, completely upside-down world thing to say. And then he's like, oh, and the CPC and the gun lobby are one and the same. They're bed buddies. Bed like, buddies. You know, like everything he said was ridiculous, but yet yeah. he's the one being attacked. It's just interesting. It's uh, we're at a strange place in Canadian history. All right. Anyway, we've talked about enough of this completely ineffective uh, MP that uh, that where I'm wondering who would even vote for a man like this. I'm yeah, just not even sure what that person is like. But uh, nonetheless, it, it happened uh, and it has to change in the next election, by the way. Yep. All right. Uh, National Range Day. You're, uh, <laughs> we've got an interesting story about this. So yeah. you're holding a little event. Why don't you do like a minute on your event, and then we'll we'll come back and uh, and we'll talk about why we're actually brought this up. It's kind of interesting. So the idea behind National Range Day is it's a day to celebrate the 2.3 million people that make up our community and to open our doors to the public. So folks who maybe otherwise wouldn't have the opportunity can come out and try the shooting sports. And I host a great big crazy event here in Ottawa. It's a lot of fun. I've got bouncy castles and bouncy slides, a kid's range, a barbecue, cotton candy, like the whole nine yards, right? And this is our second annual event. I'm holding it at EOS, EOSC. And National Range Day uh, was developed and is always held on the first Saturday in June every year. So that is this upcoming Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it's a day to, because we get nothing but vilified by the, by the sitting government. Yeah. And it's a day for us to have of our, of our own, to recognize that there are people that legally own and use firearms in Canada that are not a danger to the, to the public. And for people to come in and understand why Canadians still own guns here now over 150 years after Confederation and why it's more, more important than it's ever been. Right. And that's, and, right. and why we're trying to preserve it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, I think that anyone and it's and it's held at ranges, government approved ranges. I think anyone would see that as a as a reasonable thing for us to want to have our a day to 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 be recognized, I guess. Yeah, and we can do it every year, always on the first Saturday of June. So Yeah. Well, as is the government that we have and their collaborators, their enablers in the NDP and the bloc, um, they're they're so prone to infantile behavior. We've seen that for seven and a half years straight, un, unrelenting. Um, they decided that they would do something this year that probably tops their ridiculousness. Uh, why don't you tell us about it? Yeah, well, they've got this, like, royal proclamation. Um, they made it through an order in council, no, I see. And it comes down uh, from on high from Mary Simon, governor general. And it is a national day against gun violence. And, of course, it will fall on the first Friday in June every year. So... Henceforth, from this day onwards, the first Friday in June will be National Day Against Gun Violence, and the first Saturday in June will be National Range Day. Now, I think this is meant to be some sort of, uh, you know, a troll or gotcha by the liberal government. I mean, there's 364 other days they could have chose from to honor that day or to, to um, make note of it. But it's not the gotcha they think it is because we are also – against gun violence. Like I will, I will happily observe that because I am also for a peaceful, safer community and I am against gun violence. Well, just so, how, just how ridiculous, like how childish. Yeah. Right. And then they'll be like, Oh yeah. my God. I mean, we, that's not what, that's not the reason it was on that day. It's like, well, what? Like one in 364 oh, yeah. chance that you, and you didn't know that it was national range day. It's, it's like, we never did it before or didn't tell anybody about it. Right. There was a hundred events yeah. last year in its very first year. There's pro yeah. probably well over a hundred this year. Oh yeah. Anyway, just, just what a bunch of ridiculous people 
you know, it's, it's, they've really made a mockery out of government. But you know what? I want to do one more thing because I haven't looked at a royal pl- proclamation here in Canada, I don't think ever before. And I just, you know, I just think that it's just, the language is just really interesting to me. Um, so mm-hmm. anyway, I'm going to put it up on screen here. Uh, this is from Charles III, right? This proclamation via yeah, his King governor Charles. general. Charles III, by the grace of God and the United Kingdom, Canada, and his other realms and territories. And he's the defender of the faith, by the way. But this language is really interesting. And just before this uh, section called, you know, that's the witness, right, which is the governor general, it says, of all which our loving subjects, that's you commoners, by the way, in case you weren't sure who they're talking about. It's you that have, you know, come scrawling in from the fields to, to, to listen to the proclamation. Uh, all our loving subjects and all others whom these presents, these gifts may concern are required to take notice and govern yourselves accordingly. Govern people. yourself accordingly, yeah, yeah. present. And then even when yeah. they talk, and, and they always talk about themselves in this the greatest possible way. It drives me kind of kind of batty. So the witness, our right trusty, so obviously trustworthy and well beloved. Mm-hmm. They're telling me that I beloved Mary May Simon. She's really got a great um, a super great, trusty. Yeah, she's got a really great uh, wardrobe by here, by the way. Yeah, and then all of these earned titles, right? Like the uh, like the uh, commander of our order of military merit and all the rest of that stuff. Oh yeah. And so I just I, I just find that language. You know, I I found myself wondering, like, are we still doing this? Are we still the the loving subjects of Prince Charles? I mean, if you've heard of Prince Charles before and looked King at the royal Charles. family, like, what a mess. And then I'm yeah. I don't know. I I, I guess. Well, and. He- Here's the funniest thing, too, is like I said, I am also against gun violence. And if we want to have a day to say we are against it, that's fine. But let me get this straight. We've got a 32 percent increase in violent crime across the country. Random violence happening everywhere. A 92 percent increase in gang homicide. So this is a problem. Like it's, you know, it's unsafe. So what do they do? A royal proclamation that they are against it. Like, could you do less? Could you do any less to actually solve the problem other than your royal proclamation? You're you're implying that that's not enough. You know what you are, Tracy? That's probably an attack. You're what they call in the royalty, you're a rabble rouser, rousing (gasps) up all the rabble, right? All the unwashed masses. I don't know, man. I am. I'll wear that. (laughs) I don't know. Just the language I found was really... I'm like, ah, yeah, I never thought of myself as this dirty commoner, you know, scratching a living off of, you know, uh, off the dirt and then coming into, coming, uh, ushered into hither the uh, the instructions on high on what day I should be thinking about what they think I should be thinking about. And govern uh, yourself accordingly, yeah. peasant. Anyway, whatever, man. Whatever. You know, uh, I guess all the things that we're asking for are just, just beyond this government, which is why don't you act like adults, the most responsible adults that you know, in the country, that's what you're supposed to be when you're governing a G7 nation. And, you know, just you're supposed to be better than everybody else, not the absolute worst that society can conjure. So anyway, it just uh, yeah. it's quite it's, it's interesting. Anyway, sure hopefully is. you uh, found that um, outrageously amusing and <laughs> we thought we'd bring that to you. But uh, I think that's all we have on our list. So I appreciate the update and I guess we'll uh, we'll talk again soon. All right. We'll see you next time. All right, that's going to do it for episode 144 of the CCFR Radio podcast. Uh, A couple of things I want to go over with you before I let you go. Um, As I mentioned, no episode in two weeks. It's going to be three weeks from now, and we'll talk more about what we're going to do for the summer uh, at that point. Also, once again, last chance for AGM tickets. If you're local, get a ticket for a single event if you're interested in just just that event. Again, there'll be a a, um, uh, link to the registration page in the description box below. We're shutting off tickets. I don't know when. Like I said, I think we have to provide that count a week in advance. So it might only might even be a few days. So uh, if you can get in there and you can um, register for uh, one of the events, go ahead and do it right away. And hopefully we will see you there. It's, uh, it's going to be a really good time. And last but not least, um, CCFR Insiders. If you've heard of the CCFR Insiders group, that's a group that if you donate on a recurring donation, if you go over to the website, you can find that recurring donation thing. $20 or more per month, then you can be part of the CCFR Insiders Group, which gets you into a meeting once a month 
with Tracy Wilson and I, where you can be part of the discussion. You can ask us questions, why we do certain things, why we don't do certain things, um, that kind of thing. Give us ideas, bounce stuff off us, whatever. Uh, and those meetings are about um, an, an hour to an hour and a half each. And there's pro- we make a couple of prize draws as well. So kind of a cool group to be inside and really not that expensive to get in. Anyway, CCFR Insiders, check that out. Uh, if you want to become a member of the CCFR and support what we're doing, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, if you want to donate, I'd appreciate that too. You can do all of that at ccfr.ca or firearmrights.ca. Thanks, everyone. Take care, and we'll see you next time. This is another episode of the CCFR Radio Podcast. Remember, if you don't stand up for your own ability to own and use firearms, who will? Join the CCFR or donate right now at www.firearmrights.ca.